He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host. And I thank you for watching our broadcast today. Uh, this morning, I was thinking about life. I was thinking about my life uh, before I came to Jesus uh, as a, a Jewish man who uh, erroneously um, have, have uh, been told that Jesus is not the Messiah. And the people who told me that, you know, uh, they don't know him. And uh, they go by what has happened in tradition and religion. And tradition and religion is an enemy of God. Uh, tradition and religion keeps people away from knowing the truth. Um, now, religion with Christ as the center of religion is the answer. Uh, but religion with man's traditions and rules and regulations is, is totally opposite of what the scripture is. Uh, matter of fact, Jesus told the religious leaders, he says that your father's the devil <laughs> and that you're uh, white sepulchers and you're full of dead men's bones. And uh, Jesus was the hardest on religious leaders. But when it was coming to the, the common man, like Donna Fisher, my guest, he was gentle, he was kind, he was loving, he was forgiving. He forgave the prostitute. Uh, he forgave the, the wicked, wicked, wicked tax collector. Uh, he forgave the, the people uh, that were uh, caught in adultery. Um, uh, matter of fact, the woman uh, uh, had five husbands and the fellow she was living with wasn't her husband. And, and she, 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 he forgave her. Um, Jesus was a friend of the people. And the enemy devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy people from thinking that Jesus is a, a killer, that he's going to kill their fun, he's going to kill their party, and uh, that you're giving up something. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're not giving up anything. What you're get, gaining is the God that created you uh, coming into your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and you having a personal relationship with God Almighty through the Holy, Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And you don't have to give anything up. When you come to Christ, he'll fill you with his love, joy, and peace. And the things that you might be doing that you know are, are not right, but they give you pleasure, they'll just drift away. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we thank you for watching our show today and, and uh, listening to Donna Fisher's story. Now, not everybody's story has a horrible story. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's not that, he, oh, well, you needed Jesus because of this and that. No, we all need Jesus to have our sins forgiven and be eternally with him. Donna, thank you for coming on our broadcast today. And um, why don't you just start to share about how your life is now, uh, how you are inside and outside with Christ. Uh, as compared to how it was uh, empty before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show. I'm, I'm glad to be here. So my life now, and when you were saying about giving up, you know, if, when you receive Christ, you think you have to give up pleasures. You will never be more alive than when you receive Christ and the Holy Spirit. And I have never been higher on life, just naturally high with the Holy Spirit. You can fall out laughing. You can, you can, he just takes and makes your life lighter. He makes your life full of meaning. And if I could tell you, I, as, Pat, um, as Joe here says, you know, you don't have to have this big traumatic, you know, I wasn't a drug addict, okay? But I had this moment in my life where I had a beautiful family, two children, a house, a loving husband. And I remember the exact moment I was doing the laundry and I said, is this all there is? There was not, there was no, 
do I just want more? Do I just strive for more? What, what is it all about? And it wasn't soon after that, that my, um, my father uh, gave, gave me a Bible. <laughs> so God, God answered that. But, you know, to answer your question, it's fullness of life. Jesus said he came to give us life. And that word is zoe. That's life perpetual, life eternal. There's no substitute. We are born in bios life. But we, he wants to give us that fullness, that Zoe life. And uh, Donna, um, when you were uh, an individual without Christ, as you said, you had um, <laughs> what the world says is what you need. Uh, and, and, you know, ha have a nice home, have a nice husband, have a nice children. Uh, and, but you even said the question uh, to yourself, is this all it is? And, and the billionaire without Christ, if they're really honest, I mean, you really need a billion dollars. I mean, you're not going to live <laughs> a thousand years. Uh, so, so, but that's their striving. Uh, I need more. I need more people to love me. Uh, I need to make more albums. I need to make more movies, uh, more money. Uh, but it's all empty. It's yeah. it's just a, a, a big void that Satan masked. Now, he masked people with stuff like this that, in general, it's good, I mean, to have money. And it's good to have a nice family and it's good. But when you're obsessed with it, that's where the problem comes. And, and so he got people obsessed with this and then obsessed, uh, 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 obsessed with partying and, and, and going out and he got the people. But, but you found the answer, like you said, laughing, right? You probably laugh more now than you ever laughed. <laughs> yes, that is the truth. And so what was your upbringing in church, Donna? Did your parents go to church? Uh, did you go to church as a uh, youngster? Yeah, um, my brother and I were brought up in the Episcopalian church. And, um, you know, church was just the thing you did. Um, my parents gener generally came, but not always. They always sent us, though. <laughs> so, um but I remember my friends were Catholic and, oh, I thought if I only could be Catholic, then I'd have it all <laughs> because it was just a form. It was a, just a tradition. It wasn't it didn't have meaning. It was just an outward expression. And uh, did you ever hear um, um, going to church, uh, the born again message uh, about Jesus dying for your sins and you can receive Christ in your life and be born again and have a new life. Did you ever hear that? Not really. <laughs> I mean, when you look at the liturgy in those churches, they mention it, but it's like a recital. You know, you just rehearse it. It's, it wasn't personal. So basically, as I opened up the program, Donna, uh, it's like um, a form of godliness. Um, you know, they believe in Jesus, but yet Jesus is not the center of the religion. Uh, yeah. Man is. So, so tell us about your life uh, growing up without Christ. Uh, did you have, did you feel that void when you were young? Um, and uh, if you did, what did you try, try to do to fill the void uh, so that you could feel that, there's, that you don't have things missing in your life? Yeah. Well, I was a really uh, like I was on the junior altar guild at church and, you know, I, I did all the youth things. So I I did all the process that you were supposed to do. But like you like I told you later, it, it just came to like, OK, I did all that stuff. What else is there? So my father gave me a Bible and I started reading it. And he said, there's promises in there. There's promises of God. And then I got literature from a church and uh, I started reading the Bible and they start explaining things. And uh, it was an off-center church. Uh, the church, we all, I, was, I, I started celebrating the Jewish holidays. 
Um, you know, we did the Passover, we did the Days of Unleavened Bread, we did the Feast of Tabernacles, we did uh, the Day of Atonement, uh, you know, we celebrated that as a church. And uh, what I gained because they were so into the Bible is I started realizing that there was a lot in the Bible that I had no idea about. So I started doing that. Um, the church then went from this, as you can imagine, pretty legalistic, <laughs> you know, following these things. You know, we had just days of unleavened bread. We had to get rid of all the leavening in our house. You know, if you were, oh my gosh, if you had a cracker in your pocket, forget it. You were, you know, the lowest on the totem pole. So it was a little legalistic, right? Um, but uh, the church transformed and went from cult, really, to uh, uh, evangelical church because the Holy Spirit swept through the church. They lost more than half of their constituents because people want to follow rules. It's easy. If I just do the Hail Mary or if I just do the rule thing, I'm in. If I get confirmed, baptized, that's it. That's all I need, right? I follow the rules. So um, I started having a, a relationship with God through his word. His word came alive to me. Um, I would start to create songs to remember his word, like little jingles, you know, so that I would remember his word. And his, it just felt like it was life itself to have God's word. And um, I, I, I give kudos uh, to the, the church um, wanting to know and, and studying uh, uh, Jewish holidays. Uh, and um, unfortunately, so much of the church, they preach from the New Testament and not the old. Uh, they don't know too much about the old. And the things that you were saying um, uh, about that learning it is very good, uh, only because Jesus is Jewish. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, the Messiah is Jewish. And, um, and, and the thing is, is that it's good for Gentiles uh, to know about that, but Gentiles are Gentiles. Uh, exactly. They're not Jews. That's so, right. <laughs> uh, uh, what you were brought back is into the Old Testament, and the Old Testament is slavery. It, it's under the law. So, so what you were doing is uh, you were being under the law and being spanked for having a cracker uh, <laughs> as a as a as a Gentile, when that's what the Jews do, uh, yes. who aren't saved. Uh, but but finally, thank God that the Holy Spirit came and now uh, there's a, a truth coming in of being evangelical. And, and, and that's good. So once Donna, that you did come to Christ, now you said your father gave you a Bible. OK, but that doesn't mean that your father is a follower of Jesus. <laughs> OK, um, was your father a, a born again believer in Christ when he gave you the Bible? Or was it just like, Donna, you go to church and once in a blue moon, mommy and I will come, your mother and I will come to church, you know? Well, my father gave me the Bible. He was um, already living in Arizona with my parents moved to Arizona. Um, but they got baptized in a river in Arizona and they were born again. So they, oh, cool. um, he wanted me to really understand the whole message of God, but he was really looking at it again from the Old Testament, which you need to put them both together, obviously. There's a reason for both. Um, but my father today, he's 92. Um, and I, I know that he knows the word of God. And I just want to make sure that he knows that uh, until his last breath here on earth, he is whole, healed and delivered. And uh, God's got him on the other side. When he goes, uh, he'll be with the Lord, and That's uh, right. he, he'll he'll escape uh, judgment uh, for for our sins because we're all born in sin, and uh, Jesus paid for our sins. Now it's a uh, it's a free gift. In other words, Donna, if I said to you, uh, I'm going to give you a round trip ticket to um, eh, let's just say uh, Bermuda, <laughs> uh, and, and are you going to refuse it? I don't think so. Right. Um, so, so basically, that's what it is. The Lord's given the world a free gift yeah. of eternal life. Yes. You don't have to pay for it. He paid for it. Now, when you came to Christ, Donna, uh, did you start to share the Lord 
with your friends or people at church that were not believers or did you wait a little while? Because as you said, now you're getting enthusiasm. And yeah. some people, the enthusiasm comes instantly and they share it. Other ones, the enthusiasm comes instantly, but they wait a little bit. Uh, yeah. how, how was it with you, Donna? Um, with me, I want to share. <laughs> I want to share everything. Uh, but uh, I was more of an equipper in the church. So I was in that church uh, that I was helping you about. I was a deaconess. I did, ran the women's ministry. Uh, we put on women's conferences. Um, we did fundraisers. We mainly internal things, uh, not many outreaches, uh, but it was good. You know, the women learned to pray on their own. They learned to put on a church service. You know, we did a lot of things as women because we, that whole church was transforming from a legal based church to, uh, you know, evangelical church. So I, I would say, and I was praise dancing and, um, I like to express my belief. So I, I hope that answers your question. I'm more of an expressive person with that. And I wanna bring as many people as I can to know that, to experience that. Yeah, um, outside of the church, uh, were you able to share with some people that you knew uh, or did you kind of just let uh, your life shine? Uh, uh, I think it was St. Augustine. He said, uh, uh, preach the, the, the word and, uh, and and if necessary, use words. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I was I was more of a uh, at first and under not not now. <laughs> I was more of an undercover Christian, but you know things. Uh, I remember my sister in law saying to me, you know Donna, because you know with that other church we didn't celebrate Christmas and stuff like that. She said I didn't agree with what you were uh, necessarily believing, all of what you're believing. But because I was fervent, I ignited her faith to return to God. She had taken a hiatus from God. So, you know, like you said, sometimes even though I was, she didn't, you know, buy into what I was believing, it brought her back to God because she saw I was zealous for God. And, and uh, the scripture, um, everything that people need in life, Donna, is in the word. Yes. Everything. It doesn't matter what it is. There's, there, there's everything is in there. Every problem that an individual have. I mean, you could look in Proverbs uh, and it just tells about what it is because God wrote the word. He wrote his word. Uh, as you might've heard uh, the Bible, the basic instructions before leaving earth. And, <laughs> and that's basically what it is. And the devil will do anything he can uh, to, he has a million excuses why you shouldn't come to Christ. And uh, the sad part is many people said, I'll wait. And they didn't know that they were going to die. And now they're eternally damned in hell where it's so bad that you can't even describe it. And the Bible says a little bit uh, about it, but not as much as it talks about heaven and somebody could read about heaven in uh, Revelations chapter 21 and 22. And so Donna, uh, now, um, were you an introvert kind of before you came to Christ uh, and, uh, or were you extrovert because you say that you, you're doing all these things in church? Uh, uh, people can do things on the outward, but still be introvert. Yeah. Uh, were you, how were you? Well, I'm pretty much an extrovert. I, what do you say? I, I talk to think rather than think to talk. <laughs> so, um, but you know, uh, you can be an extrovert, but not fully walking in the fullness of who you're supposed to be. So that's where I was. I didn't have confidence in myself. And, uh, you know, God gave me that confidence because you know, he died for me when I was yet a sinner. And that gave me confidence in my life that somebody would love me. He loved me first. Before I even knew what love was, he loved me first. And that gave me the confidence that I needed to, you know, he wants me to grow up into the fullness of who he is. And as you said, he's given me all things 
for life and godliness. So what am I waiting for? <laughs> you know, he's given me the basic instructions before leaving earth. So I need to walk in it fully. You know, one thing I, I do want to say here is um, I was just remembering things before this interview. And uh, right, right after my father gave me the Bible, I started reading into about two years later. Um, I had uh, had a son and we realized that there was not something right. So he was diagnosed on the autism spectrum. And it was to me a gift of God that I not um, that I had an understanding that God was going to go through this with me. I always said to myself, if I had gotten that news and didn't know that I had a savior that you know, was willing to go to the nth degree for me, that I would have been lost. You know, it was painful, but I could do it because I knew God was there with me. I had, a, you know, his promises, like you said, that are in the Bible. Don, I was going to ask you that question. Um, you answered before I even got a chance to ask. I, I mean, uh, your spirit. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you that. Um, as a believer, um, when something hardship comes, you're able to deal with it. Uh, but as a non-believer, uh, it's it's just very it's it's very difficult. And um, uh, even I remember before I came to Christ, I hated 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 to go even go in the hospital. I couldn't stand it. Um, and uh, my parents, uh, thank God, um, um, they didn't have too many operations before I came to Christ. But after I came to Christ, they had quite a few operations and I, I was able, yes. you know, to be able to go through it and not only go through it, go to the hospital and visit them. Yes. Uh, uh, because God, God knows everything that, that, that is good for us, our makeup and not good. And like you with your son, it would have been a disaster. Yes. And, and, and for me, uh, it, uh, without before I come to Christ, I would have done more drinking and more gambling and more drugging to to drown the pain. It was yeah. it was bad enough the pain that I had uh, that I was drowning, but it would have been more, and maybe I would have died. And and so uh, Donna, when um, now with your with your son with autism, now you have a piece to be able to go through yeah. it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and. and is there any instances, any instance that you might be able to think of uh, where it was a little rough there uh, with your son and, and then uh, you were able to calm him down? Because I know it's uh, it's a, it's a hardship with that. Yeah. Oh, we <laughs> you got a few years. <laughs> so a lot. It's, yeah. a, it's a journey, let me tell you. But. The amazing thing is my son is starting to really, we read the Bible every night. I went from uh, the, uh, like a comic book Bible. I forget what the it illustrated type Bible with a comic strip and that got his attention. So now I can, I can read more without pictures with him and he's understanding it. Um, we talk about it. We read it a couple times a day. He has a verse that he reads in the morning. We, we reread it in, in the evening. So there is, you know, and people are born with a basic knowledge of good and evil. I believe that because God says we are without excuse. Because I say to him, do you want, you know, we're talking about Deuteronomy, blessings or curses, uh, you know, life or death. He's like, I want blessings in life, you know, he, right away. He, there's no hesitation. People understand the goodness of God. And, and really, when you show the goodness of God, that's when people's hearts melt. Uh, th there was a, um, a, a person who uh, was um, pretty, uh, pretty bad off. Uh, matter of fact, uh, kind of in a mental institution. But he started reading the Bible. <laughs> and he started to read the Bible. And the, the power of God in that word. Right. illuminated him, changed his whole mind. Yes. Where he, he was let out and he's been a pastor for many years. <laughs> awesome. Because the word, uh, I know another fella 
he, he, he's in the ministry. I haven't seen him for a while, but he went around the country just going, and he's from England, going and touring the United States, going there and, and meeting people that were born again and, and just by their hospitality, right? And uh, uh, what he saw, uh, he came to Christ. He says, this is real. Yes, yes. This is real. And what you have is real. Uh, is there something you'd like to say to the audience, Donna, before we uh, close? Wow. Is that time already? Uh, just um, something I had mentioned at church the other day that, you know, you're never more alive until you're doing what God has created you to do. And that's to love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. And that loving the neighbor may, may be giving a food to somebody in your neighborhood that needs it or, or uh, you know, stopping and talk to somebody that's on crutches and praying for them. You never know what it is, but it makes us alive. You know, it's like the Holy Spirit is ignited in us and it flows. Rivers of living water flow when we're participating with God. There is no downside uh, to loving God. He gives us everything we need. Uh, for 20 years, Donna, um, I went into the prison and brought the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, every, oh, for many, many, many of those 20 years, we'd go into the women's prison on Thanksgiving morning. Uh, uh, there was uh, believers that would give up their Thanksgiving morning to go in and to be a blessing to the women. And um, as you say, giving. Uh, and the women were blessed and many did come to Christ. Uh, whether they stayed there or not, that's between God and them. Right. But when we left the prison, we were so tremendously blessed that <laughs> the people were saying, wow. And now they're going to their respective families, but they're going with the joy of the Lord. Yes. that they, they did God's work and that they, they go by their families and they go with a, with a, with a, a great attitude uh, because uh, when you say you give, God will give back to you, you know? Yeah. So Donna, yeah, as you went, wow, it's so fast. Yeah. <laughs> when the, uh, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like the days, weeks, and months we're, we're uh, three or four months away, right. From uh, coming into uh the new year, you know, so time goes fast. But thank you, Donna, for coming on our show and sharing the truth of your life and the truth of the word of God. Well, you're very welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Bible says, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Um, have you tasted the Lord yet? Donna tasted a lot of religion. And she said one day, is this all what it's about? Uh, she tasted religion. You might be taste religion now. You might be tasting drugs, alcohol, sex outside of marriage. You might be tasting all these things, but they're all void and null. But Jesus is the answer. He loves you. He died for you. Receive him in your heart. Christ will touch you and change your life. And more important, you'll be eternally with him. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got He's got the whole world.